Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Today on the show, you have just me. I just returned from the Arthur Finley College in the UK, which is in Stansted, and I took a course on trance mediumship, or if you're in the UK, you say trance mediumship. And before I go any further, I just, a little public announcement, you may realize that I keep all of these interviews commercial free. And I do that because I hate commercials interrupting things. But what you might not know is I fund all of these podcasts myself through my catering business. And every so often I get a check in the mail from one of the listeners saying what a difference it's made in their life. And not that you have to send me anything, but I do ask that if you want to, um, you're able to uh, make a donation to this podcast to keep it going. Even if you want to just send me a couple of bucks and say, take yourself out for a cup of coffee on me, boy, I would appreciate that. It would really help in me getting the podcast out as far as it can. So if you're interested in making a contribution, you can simply go to paypal.me slash Sandra Champlain. Or if you just scroll down, if you're listening to this on YouTube, uh, you can just scroll down in the description of the episode. And at the very bottom, I have that link, paypal.me slash Sandra Champlain. So I don't feel any pressure that you need to, but if you'd like to, boy, I can tell you, I could really use it for a good cause. So on to our episode. I have in front of me my notebook from this course in trance communication. And I want to tell you that it was a brilliant, brilliant course. Basically, what trance is, is it's almost going into what I would imagine like a a hypnotic state, really relaxing your mind and body, taking time to still every part of you with the intention of being in direct communication with the spirit world. Um, Backing up just a little bit, every single one of us has a spirit team behind us, in front of us, around us, above us, below us. We have people that are our champions. I mean, they are right with us, being with us every step of our life. Some were there in the very beginning, before you even came to earth and decided what your plan of attack is going to be for living this life. Um, Others jump in when you need them the most during different times of your life, different things you're doing or learning. But we all have a spirit team. Now, it's not just one guy, guy and a gal. It could be hundreds, uh, if not even more than that throughout your life. So the thing is, is they love you more than any other soul has ever loved you. And you know what I'm finding out, especially through these courses that I'm taking, is that they don't, you know, they love and support us. You know, we have our free will, but they want to help us. The thing is, is it takes communication from us to them asking. And something neat that happened this past week is I got a, um, oh, maybe a month ago, I got this book called The Five Minute journal and it's about gratitude. And I always, everybody knows the importance of gratitude. Not only does it make you feel better, um, but it you know, it changes your perspective on life instead of being a victim. So I have been taking five minutes every morning. It's not even five minutes. And the first thing I do is I write what I'm grateful for, just three things. And then I write three things that would be great if they happened today, uh, or three things that would make today great. And then there's this powerful affirmation. I am. um, I am confident. I get a lot of things done today. I am beautiful. Whatever it is for the day that I feel uh, would be a good affirmation for the day, I, I put in there. So the week I was at the Arthur Finley College, I noticed every item that I put in the things that I'm would be great if they happened today. Um, they all happened. Every single one of them happened. And it was so clear that there's some force <laughs> going on here. Uh, and I thought, oh, that's pretty incredible. But it dawned on me. So 
we all have the spirit team working with us. And if your mind is anything like mine, it's jumbled. You know, we think thoughts about this. Next thing you know, we're thinking about something else. Next thing, what am I cooking for dinner? Next thing, you know, oh, I got so much to do today. So there's not a lot of clear communication, I find, between me and my spirit team. And to be honest with you, even though I've had plenty of guests on talking about the guides we all have, have I taken time to develop a relationship with them? No. You know, I mean, it's so easy to say that they're there, but to have this relationship, no. But as evidence of me receiving the things that I wrote down in my journal, I thought, maybe they're listening when I write it down. And it's not, I don't think the point of writing it down, but for me to write down what I want makes me think clearly about what I do want and really pay attention to it in a, in a way that there's no other jumbled thoughts going on in my mind. And when I was traveling back on the airplane from London Heathrow to Boston, I had picked up a, a journal at the Heathrow airport with the intention to write a letter to my guides and tell them where I'm at in my life and, and really what, where I could use their help. And man, I wrote several pages, but I, I poured it out as I would to a very best friend. Uh, all the, you know, between health and family and finance and work and, and, um, it, just even developing in my, mediumship or spirituality, I think is a better word, to really write out what it is that I want and even ask them to be more part of my life or or not so much be more of a part, but make it known to me that they're nearby. So if you're somebody who's got a scattered mind like I do, you know, very, whether you type it out or you write it in a journal, to really focus your thoughts on where you're at and like you're talking to a best friend, because you are, uh, those things that are important to you in your life and just spill the beans, spill your heart out. That's just my recommendation. So before I want, before I get too much into what happened in my course, I want to tell you that mediumship and trance mediumship is not a gift. It is a skill. The tutors that I had at the Arthur Finley College have been mediums for many, many, many years. Uh, 30 plus years, I think, for one and um, maybe 20 plus years for the other. And a lot of times people say, you know, some people are born mediums and, and things like that. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, I want you to know, my friend, that you are a soul having a human experience. And why this is important is because when we cross into the spirit world, you know, we're still souls, but now we're having a spirit world experience. So while we're on planet Earth, we have the capabilities uh, that we do in the spirit world. I mean, it's um, not as easy, I don't think, because we have time and space and, and so much stuff going on in our life. But each one of us can develop this relationship with the spirit world, with God, what what, however you wish to call that all-powerful um, source, but it takes practice. And so I feel after leaving the college, it's my job to share what I learned to help you with your spirituality, help you connect with those who love you so much for you if you're interested to do some of these unbelievably wildly fascinating fun things and they're all to me proof that we don't die so transmediumship let's just get back to that cuz that's what the course was about is about quieting your mind uh blending with the spirit world and then using it for some different ways now there's different things that i witnessed happening the oh, I'll get to the the coolest one last, but the first thing is trance speaking. So you can quiet your mind, blend with the spirit world, and again, this is practice because it's hard to quiet our mind, but have the intention to speak words of philosophy. So what this looks like on the court is because this happened to me, 
closing my eyes. It takes, gosh, a good five, 10 minutes. And with, and, and I'll tell you how to do all this. So don't, don't feel you have to take notes right now, but blending with the spirit world and the experience within my being is that all of a sudden, um, you know, I'm trying to keep my thoughts well, no thoughts actually, being really out of a place of a clear mind. But then all of a sudden I get, for me, I got kind of goosebumps coming in from my right side in. And I felt my posture change. I felt my breathing change. Um, you know, sometimes I, when I feel the goosebumps, I think that's inspiration. And so the homework was to say, spirit wants to tell you just to get the ball rolling of me opening my mouth. But the experience coming from me was spirit wants to tell you, but then my mouth kept moving and I kept speaking and I was not being in control of the words that I said, if that makes any sense. It's as if um, my mouth and my voice had a mind of its own and I'm trying to keep my mind on not thinking you know, paying attention to my breath, and yet my voice carries on. Now, it's nothing to be scared about. It's not somebody is uh, coming into my body and taking over like, you know, the scary movies. And what we were taught is really happening is we are taking our consciousness, our mind outside of ourselves and tapping into the spirit world and letting them blend with us. Now, what kind of words come out? It's complete messages of inspiration. It is um, some of the times that we did this, we either worked with one person or there were four people in front of us, or I had the courage at the very end of the week to get up in front of the entire group. Well, I didn't get up. I was sitting in my chair and I think there was 12 people in the room and to go into this trance meditation state and just share whatever came. And I talk about fear. <laughs> All these eyes looking at me with my eyes closed, expecting me to talk. Oh, But there's something about the trance state that I always thought people went into this such deep state that they don't remember what happens. And that's very rare because our conscious mind is listening. And so, you know, my experience was these words are coming out of my mouth and my mind's going, oh my gosh, am I saying that? And then it it would cause me to pause. And then I thought, no, no, just relax a little bit, go back in and, you know, let these words flow. And, and, And they did. So we're always listening. And The tutor said through practice, we get to go to this deeper and deeper level. And so uh, her experience is is that she's aware that there's words being spoken, but she almost feels like she's in the room next door. So she's not paying attention to it. So trans speaking is um, really incredible. And and I witnessed so much of it. And what really is distinctive between trans speaking and normally speaking, normal speaking, is that the words come out smooth. They're often poetic. Um, people obviously breathe, but it's not like I say, you know, I say um a lot, which I apologize about that. And my sc- thoughts are a little scattered. It's just a smooth flowing words of inspiration, as if you're reading a poem or just reading some philosophy. One of our tutors, her name is Jenny Gomez, on the very first night did a demonstration of trance speaking. And for 45 minutes, she went on, and it was her voice, nobody was, no strange voice, but she spoke this pure thoughts of... um from the spirit world, what life's about, uh, what death is about, and even talking to us as a group in the course about being on our course and um, what, how to use the spirit world. And it was so beautiful. I mean, really incredible. If anybody has an opportunity to take a course at the Arthur Finley College, it is great. It is just great. We can talk more about that another time, but what a place to, to learn. Just great. So anyways, that's trance speaking. There's also trance healing. And so what that looks like on the court is you are sitting in the same room as a person and you, the first step is blending energies, which, well, how do you heck, the heck do you blend energies? Well, there's something called the power of intention. And I always, you know, it always sounded good and, you know, intend something to happen, but how the heck do you do that? But our thought and our intentions are the driving force behind 
everything is what I'm told. And if you can imagine there's somebody you're praying for and you, I mean, you're really praying for the health of, like, I remember when my dad had cancer and I, I haven't prayed much, I have to be honest with you, but I, in that, those moments would be by his side. And really, I mean, I was praying for a miracle healing. I was praying for anything. But if you can imagine having that kind of intention behind it, like really talking to God, like heal my dad, don't make him suffer the way he did. And if you can just imagine in your own life, having one of those times where you really put so much feeling into wanting something to happen, that's intention right there versus I went to Catholic school and we would go to mass every week and there are some prayers we had to memorize and I don't even know what they meant, but you know, I memorized them. And so we'd stand up and and recite the prayers. Can you see that the prayer I had for my father had feeling and conviction and intention behind it? Whereas just reciting something in, in mass didn't. Okay, so there's a big difference. It's not about the words, it's the feeling behind them. So in trance healing, you know, we you really have to make this up, however it would be for yourself, but trance healing is to have a person sitting next to you or across from you or behind you, wherever, uh, and having this intention of blending energies, whatever that would look like to you. I, you know, in my mind, I kind of believe... I. My picture in my mind is that we're all these molecules and that their energy comes together with my energy. And then the next step of it is to bring it into the spirit world. And so the way I do this is I imagine myself being this bold uh, light you know, this bit really bold light emanates from inside me. You know, I, I do a real quick from head to toe, filling myself with this, like the brightest light you can ever imagine, you know, really, really bright light that you can't even look at because it's so bright, you know. So I imagine that this bright light is filling my body. It's coming out my pores. It's filling the room, okay? And then I imagine, for me, it's the sun. It's, this is... God, this is spirit world, it is, you know, the, whatever you want to call it, uh, the eternal. But I imagine that these rays of sunshine are coming from the sun, you know, that's my version of it, and that our energies blend. And so, this blending of energies between me and this other person, you know, I offer to the spirit world with the intention, any physical, emotional, spiritual whatever kind of healing the person needs, let me the, be the vessel to help this person. And so the spirit world gets to actually merge energies with me or I'm merging energies with them. And I am being used as a vessel of energy to heal the person. So what goes on in my mind is I have to still my body and still my thoughts and allow myself to be used. Now, there's different kinds of energies, but apparently for healing, the, you know, we live in a fantastic human body that's filled with human energy. And so they're able to use our energy to heal. So this all sounds well and good, but does healing really work? Well, I, I don't remember all the examples that I was told about, um, but there are definitely healings that have happened. There's been kids that, um, uh, oh gosh, I can't even think of the words of the diseases. But I, don't, I mean, I don't want to tell you everybody gets healed all of the time. They don't. But say, for instance, there was a child who was suffering unbelievably with epilepsy, unbelievably bad. And through trance healing, the epilepsy stopped. And I'm going to have a guest on in the near future. His name is Chris Ratter. And uh, wrote a, he wrote a great book called uh, Medium Within or Mediumship Within. And he it's his journey of actually becoming one of these trance healers. Really great. And so while we were working with people, we just, you know, it's not up to us how we heal or what happens. It's up to the spirit world. Not everybody is healed physically um, because, you know, the truth is we are all signed up for, oh, that sounds terrible, different things to learn in this lifetime. If you're suffering with cancer right now, I'm not saying that I believe you signed up to have cancer. I'm not. Uh, I don't want it to come out that way. But we all learn 
and grow through our suffering. And so why some people get healed and some don't, I, I don't have the answer. You know, it's our own soul's journey of what we're learning in this lifetime and what we're dealing with. So anyways, I'll, I'll get off that subject for a little while. But people can have um, emotional healing and 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 spiritual healing and we just have to trust that we are giving what is needed and we saw a great demonstration one of the tutors her name is Simone Key and she oh she's a fantastic teacher and she stood up behind a person who was sitting in a chair she went into the trance mode and she gently had her fingers resting on the person's shoulders. And you don't have to touch the person, but it just helped steady her, steady her a little as she was standing there. And what she did in the trance mode, and of course, she is very well trained and practiced for 30 plus years, but she was able to talk to the person and diagnose them and let them know from the spirit world what, what things they needed to do. Now, granted, we were, she was doing this in, a front, in front of a group of 20 people. So th- there is integrity, I think, within the spirit world that they weren't going to just come out with, um, you know, if someone had a disease or something, nothing like that. But it was just some things that they needed to pay attention to. And the person who was sitting in the chair was having an open, uh, I don't want to say discussion, but with the medium by saying, yes, that's true. Yes, that's true. Yes, that's true. And it was really amazing to see how much, yes, that's true. You know, you've had this pain in your back. You fell out of a tree when you were six years old. Um, This is what's going on with your spine. Really specific things. Now, was there times that the medium was not correct? Yes, there were a few with some of the people that I talked to. And when we brought this question up to the teacher, Simone, she says that the the spirit world works through us, but they have to work through our own mind, our own subconscious. So there is a little margin of error there. Um, And, uh, and I, and I can get that, you know, I, and boy, I think all of us know that who have even gone to a medium, there is no medium that I have found yet that has been 100% right on correct with communication from the spirit world. It's because it all goes through our minds and, you know, we'll, we might see a picture of something and, you know, our mind's like thinking, oh, is that a balloon, regular balloon or a hot air balloon? And, you know, our imagination kicks in. So we are a human filter, so it's not 100% correct, but Bottom line is the stories I've heard and even read about about some incredible physical healings uh, are tremendous. So there is no reason to not practice trans mediumship because you never, ever know the difference your energy is having help heal another person. And you know, the, I, I also ask the question, can we do trans healing on ourselves? And the answer is yes. It is having the intention of whatever is the best healing for yourself. Go into this trance state, clear your mind, and allow the spirit world to work as they do. I also asked the question about distant healing. Now, the answer I got was distant healing is extremely powerful, but it is different than trance healing because in the trance state, um, our energy is being used for someone like in the same room. So one thing they really stress to us is to practice this and experiment with this. And I know people that are practicing, some of our, my classmates, over Skype and even over the phone. And I think, well, is it true, isn't true that we need to be in the same space as a person? So for me, the jury's still out on this. And uh, boy, I tell you, you know, we just had the um, bombing in Manchester in the UK that was has, is all over the news. And, and I just thought to myself, who knows what powers exist really, but did, you know, I've been taking some time and sending distant prayers and going into this trance mode and, you know, anything that I can give to help those families on their journey. Um, anyways, it's very, it's devastating what happened and I know we all know how bad grief hurts. So anyways, that's a little bit about trance healing. 
In trance, there's also something called automatic writing. And what this is, and we did a really cool experiment, is we were all sitting at a table and we had several sheets of paper in front of us. And one at a time, we would hold a pencil in our hand to the paper. And then we would go into this trance mode, you know, with the intention that if the spirit world wants to use our hand and draw or write something, that they can use our arm and hand and and write any messages. So, you know, I, okay, so I've never done this before, but I had the intention, okay, if you want to use my arm and hand, you can. And if there's some message or and any practice coming through the spirit world, you know, have at it, use me. So my experience was uh, quieting my mind and, you know, envision this light coming through me and blending with the spirit world. And my hand actually started to move on the paper. I, I you know, I felt it because I'm thinking, oh, geez, my hand is moving. You know, it was, it was pretty great. But I'm like, let the thoughts go, Sandra, just be still. And they just continued to to write. And when I opened my eyes, it was a whole bunch of scribbles. There was no word written there. But trusting that this is my very first time doing it and it's the spirit world's very first time doing it through me maybe some practice is needed okay and so um, my tutor said the first time that she had done it she had she's got no artistic abilities and she drew a perfect per, uh, picture of a bird and she said it was you know really great because she had never uh, drawn before and um, and just how perfect it was. Of course, now her eyes are closed when this is happening. So that's pretty pretty great. But she says in that moment, she says a bird hit the window and ended up dying. So she's like, no, none of, no more of that for me. And so it's fine because she uses her mediumship other ways. But there, you know, it, um, I think if you've heard my interview with Sandy Ingham, Ingham in the UK, she is a trans artist and she she actually doesn't remember she goes into such a deep mode of trance and she draws pictures of people's loved ones you know really really great pictures so this is something uh fun you can practice with one of the guys that's in my group he actually when he was in the trance mode he wrote chinese words and um not, nobody in the group speaks chinese but it's so clear that that was what he was writing and it was right in front of me someone else wrote a couple of sentences of really profound wisdom that came out um another person had written uh, i think it was the name jane and there was a date and you know somebody else in the group said oh my friend jane she she died that year and you know was that her? Maybe. But if this is something that appeals to you, you can certainly do this and practice this and, and, and have some fun with it. You know, I, I'm excited because I want to keep practicing it, but like, I want to know that my writing or my speaking is, is coming from the spirit world. That's something that like I wouldn't know, or, you know, if I wrote in a different language or something like that, a little bit more evidence of, uh, that it's not just my subconscious mind, because in a court of law, there's no saying that. Well, I was I was trance speaking. I was definitely channeling from the spirit world. It wouldn't hold up because there's there's really no proof. So I know once we do experiment with this, I mean, you will know for yourself that these are not words coming from your subconscious. I mean, some of them are so profound. Uh, and anyways, it's fun. So if this lights you up, and again, this is not anything that you have to be some famous medium to do. You are a soul and you have every power here. You also have the spirit team and now they're new at it too. So just because you may not be good at it off the bat, it's not just you. 50% is them. And to maybe even set an appointment when you're going to practice some of these things and and work with your spirit team. I mean, really like this is, this is fun stuff. So another thing that happened, and I think this was the most beautiful, Beautiful thing I witnessed in trance um, uh, speaking. It's called trance communication. And if you remember the movie Ghost, there was a scene that Whoopi Goldberg, let's see, Patrick Swayze was the ghost, and he actually stepped into uh, Whoopi Goldberg's energy and could speak to Demi Moore. Now, I've heard from all the courses that I've done that trance communication does happen, but it is very, very rare. Okay, so 
I actually got to witness trance communication as my teacher, my tutor, Simone Keys, is someone who does trance communication. So what this looked like uh, in our classroom is the first step is she had to make a link with uh, somebody in the spirit world and, you know, in front of the group, she's like, okay, I've got a mother here. And she gave some specifics. And one woman uh, in the group says, yeah, I can recognize that. That's my mom. So the woman actually sat in front of Simone. They sat just in front of each other, facing each other in chairs. And Simone then proceeded to go clear her mind and go into the trance mode with the intention of the mother being able to step into her to speak through her daughter. And I, you know, my, my mind is thinking, oh, come on. <laughs> but, you know, I'm there witnessing all kinds of miraculous stuff. So why, why can't this happen? You know, all right, let me just put out, put aside my, my ego that's commenting on everything and just be with it. Well, I have to tell you, it was th- the most beautiful thing that I've, probably have ever seen because the voice was still the voice of Simone, the, the tutor, uh, but a different way of speaking. You know, she just sp- spoke slower and it just sounded like a different being speaking through her. But with specifics, she brought through memories that she had had with the daughter and said things, remember when we did this and remember when we did this. And they were so specific, even uh, reading uh, coffee grounds as opposed to reading tea leaves and, um, and some of the journeys they had together. And ultimately, you know, the message is that the mother is with the daughter and of course she's proud of her. And uh, yeah, there was even a message that uh, thanking her for naming, uh, I guess one of the grandchildren were named after her, if I remember this correctly. But it was such evidence that, to me, that the mother was speaking through uh, this medium and talking to the daughter. And of course, the daughter was answering, yes, 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 and could say, I love you back to the mom. And I have to tell you, I, I cried. And so did everybody in the room because it was just such a pure thing with so many specific messages of love. And, and so another, uh, ha- thing happened is, um, the medium again, uh, came out of the trance mode and she brought, said, oh, okay, I've got a father here and he's telling me he works for some, this kind of company and this is what he did. And and then there was a man in the group that said, yeah, I can take that. That sounds like my dad. So this man uh, joined Simone and sat face to face. And of course, our small group is witnessing all this. And the voice that came through Simone uh, wasn't a man's voice. It was still Simone's voice, but again, a whole different pattern of speech. And the message was again, there was some very specific things that the father wanted to tell the son, not general things that any father could tell a son, but very, very specific. And what hit me the most was the father actually came to apologize to the son that he made his life about helping other people, helping other families, but not taking the time to be there with his own family. And so this man was sitting in the chair and he was saying, yes, yes, you know, because it was just confirmation that this was his father coming through. And by the end of it, the father made some, this is how I remember it, so I don't remember the words, but basically was saying that in heaven or the hereafter or the spirit world, whatever you want to call it, there's still learning to be done. And how much this man has learned from his son, watching how the son grew up, the man he became, how he's making a difference with so many people, and how he in turn has learned about love and service all through watching his son. And again, I was crying, other people were crying in the room, because to get an apology like that, I mean... People, we have people in our life that, uh, whether we don't get along with or there's some hurt or they don't understand us. You know, I really felt in that moment that we're all in our individual journeys. And if we don't agree with someone or someone doesn't agree with us or there's fighting, you know, there will be a time where 
they get to look at the big picture and and be responsible for it. And nobody's judging us in the hereafter. Like I've said this before, there's no heaven for you, hell for you. You know, we, we judge ourselves, but that we continue to learn this, uh, learned and we continue to grow. And there was a woman in the group who has an estranged relationship with her own dad. And even though, yes, we would like for all of us to have our relationships work out while we're still here on planet Earth, um, they may not. But to know that our life here is short, that our love continues after the body dies, that our growth continues, that uh, we may all get together again and, and be able to talk about this and uh, make amends and people will learn for themselves the hurt they've caused, caused other people. And there's still the possibility of making amends after someone passes away. But to witness this, it was, it was unbelievably wonderful. It was, um, and again, with such specifics, such specifics that I just knew the this dad was really talking to the son. So we got to experiment with all of this. So we actually got to experiment with trance uh, communication. This is called trance communication. And we had to take partners. And again, the medium, the teacher, uh, couldn't have been a better teacher, by the way. At not any point did she ever say somebody was doing something wrong. She just encouraged them, you know, just even, you know, because it is a little scary closing your eyes and and trying to speak and and thinking, okay, it's somebody from the spirit world speaking through you. I mean, that stuff is weird, right? You know, and so she says, it doesn't matter. Even if it's your own subconscious bringing through messages, at least try, you know, so it's really great. So, she said, you know, she she has a belief that we can actually uh, teach people this trance communication. And, you know, things don't happen overnight. Some, I mean, some of the very best mediums, it takes years for them to uh, do what they do. And um, But she says, you know, practice. And if you have, if any of this that I'm speaking about now, if, you, if it resonates with you, like, I'd really like to try that, well, then maybe there's a reason, because maybe that's part of your journey. And so... When we did the the uh, trance communication, I had a great partner who is actually an active medium, but he's never done the trance part. So he says, well, I can easily bring through someone, but I don't think I can do this trance. And I said, well, you know, let's just be willing to play with it, okay? Because, you know, why not? You know, I said, just make something up, right? Because th- that's how the, the teacher was. Just try, just try. So this gentleman actually... Uh, brought through, he, you know, first thing he did, because he had, you have to identify a link. That's what they call it. Someone in the spirit world. And he very accurately told me some things about my father. And, you know, my dad lived in Daytona Beach. And he says, okay, I see Florida, in mid Florida, uh, living on the coast and living on a golf course. And, you know, and sure enough, that's where my dad lived. And, you know, he kept looking to my eyes. This is before he did the trance part. And he said, you know, the brown eyes, you share the brown eyes with your dad. And dad and I and my younger sister always had a little private joke, you know, we're the brown eyes, you know, and and there are a few other personal things that he said that I thought, yeah, he's got my dad. And that in and of itself is so special to feel. But then he closed his eyes. And of course, his mind was getting the best of him saying, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. So guess what? You say you can't do it. You can't do it. And so I said, well, what, what message would my dad bring you know, forward. And with his eyes closed, he said something really beautiful, untouching to me. So then it was my turn to go. And so my fear is doing medium readings. Okay. I took a course in mediumship a year ago at at the college. And there's certainly plenty of times that I was right. And I could tell somebody about their deceased loved one, but there were plenty of times that I was wrong and it was simply my imagination. So I have not, uh, gone out and practiced what I've learned. And, you know, the truth is it's fear. You know, I I know many of you have written to me that you'd be happy for me to practice on you, but I also know you've lost a loved one. And, uh, you know, I feel like, oh, there's pressure. I won't be able to do it. And again, if I'm telling myself I can't do it, I can't do it. So, you know, this is a little little sidebar on this, but one of the things, um, it, basically we are all mediums. Okay. Uh, you, just because you go to the Arthur Finley college or anything doesn't 
mean that you're better than anybody. And, you know, we all have this gift. Uh, one of the things they told us to do was imagine a time in your life that you were really successful at doing something and really within ourselves uh, evoking confidence in some of the things we've done that are successful. And then just having the attitude, I can do this, you know, I got this, right? And then with the power of our imagination, you know, if I could see somebody standing next to my partner, you know, who who would that be? So I thought, okay, I'm going to muster up this courage because I'm in the classroom. You know, I can't really get it wrong, can I? Uh, And if I do, and who cares actually if I do get it wrong because this is all just trial and error. So in my mind's eye, I saw a man standing next to, um, it looks just like my imagination, um, but next to the man I was working with and he had a tweed suit on and he was very tall and he had uh, white hair and a little white mustache. And um, there are a few other things that I saw. Uh, I saw train tracks. I saw dynamite. You know, like dynamite's not normally in my mind. So the people you work with when you do medium readings, they're not supposed to feed you information. So this man's just like, yep, I can take that. Yep, I can take that. Yep, I can take that. And I'm thinking, you really? You know, train tracks and dynamite. Yep, I can take that. Yep, I can take that about my grandfather. So I'm thinking, okay, why not? So it was my turn to close my eyes and go into this trance state. And, uh, and of course, you know, you got somebody looking at you, so that's kind of weird. But I thought, no, clear my mind, clear my mind, clear my mind. And did, did anybody want to speak through me? So I, you know, what the teaching is, is to say the spirit wants to tell you just to get something coming out of my mouth, some kind of speaking. And then I went on with a very general message about how your granddad's proud of you. And, you know, and I, I actually do think, you know, this was my mind making this up because what grandfather wouldn't be proud of their grandson, right? But then something really weird happened is my hands lifted off my lap and I felt like I was reeling in a fish, right? So that's kind of strange, but I am aware that I am not purposely moving my hands. And I also felt, I call it the presence of the spirit world because I felt my posture shift. I got the goosebumps uh, and, you know, sitting up straight. And I actually felt like sun shining on my face. And, you know, so I'm telling this guy, I'm reeling in a fish. And he's, and so basically he said that, um, uh, he fishes all the time. He thinks of his granddad. And, you know, it was just his sign that his granddad was was with him. And for me, you know, to have my <laughs> limbs moving outside of me doing it, you know, to me, that was telling me, you know, there was a presence of someone. So when it was over, I said to my partner, I said, well, that's all well and good, you know, but of course I like to fish too. And maybe I was making that up. And he said to me, quick, what's my grandfather's first name? What's the first name that comes into your mind? And I said, Tom. And he says, that's right. That's my grandfather's name. And talk about goosebumps. So it's the thing where you got to trust. I mean, we fight, oh gosh, we fight ourselves so much because we do have this, this inner critic in our mind. I call it the voice, if you've read my book. Uh, but it's just this, this voice that Oh, you're not good enough. You can never do it. You know, my voice was telling me this whole time that everybody in the room was a trans medium, but I'm not, you know, I shouldn't have come. Gosh, we're so brutal on ourselves. But if you have the courage to just play, you know, that's, that's where the beauty exists. This is where these, these things come out. And so, um, I want to tell you just some, some of the other things. Let me just look at my notebook because I don't want to miss it. Um, there are, okay, let me just go through because I, I want you to practice this. Now, do you have to be a trance healer? Do you have to be a trance communicator? Do you have to be a trance speaker? Do you have to do automatic writing? No. But if I leave you with nothing else from this time that you're listening to me, I want to leave you with you have a powerful team of people behind you, beside you in front of you, wherever. They are here on your behalf and they're happy to work with you if you request it. You know, I've often heard that guardian angels won't uh, intercede in your life um, unless you talk to them. You know, uh, obviously there are stories that, you know, of life and death situations that people have um, really interesting things that happen or they're saved from accidents and things like that. Um, 
but it, I, I would love to have you develop a relationship with your spirit team. And, and that's what I'm doing right now as well. And I also think that it's important for all of us to actually have a relationship with our own soul. And in a couple of weeks, I'll have a minister, Matthew Smith, come on, who is one of the tutors at the Arthur Finley College. And he's going to give us a couple of meditations to both connect with our uh, loved, our, our spirit team, um, and also to connect with our own soul. But until that happens, you can certainly do it based on, you know, what I'm going to tell you right here. Uh, and why, what's the importance of, first of all, um, connecting with your own soul. We as human beings come into this earth for a purpose and it's the juiciest place in the universe to experience emotions and to learn. Uh, we learn service. We learn love. We learn forgiveness. We have to deal with other people. <laughs> and that's a great learning lesson in and of itself. But our soul came, comes in here for a purpose. And I know myself, you know, I, I'm 51 years old right now and I feel my life's gone by so fast, so far, you know, and I've never taken time to really sit with my soul and, you know, are we doing what we came here to do? How can we both, you know, we best learn the lessons? How can uh, we feel more love? How can we help another person? And by connecting with our own soul, um, it strengthens, I think it strengthens who we are and, and you know, our mission here on earth, you know, there's a, I have a big fear that, you know, when I close my eyes for the last time here on earth, you know, there's going to be things I should have done, things I should have said, uh, you know, that I'll have regrets. And if we can have this relationship with our own soul and empower ourselves to do some of these things right now, I think that's a really great thing to happen. So for you, for me to, um, close our eyes and to, Envision, have the intention that you are a soul having a human experience. And some people envision themselves sitting and then envision, you know, this beautiful soul. I, I envision the perfect version of myself, like in iridescent colors, kind of stepping out of myself for just, for just a second and, and seeing this beautiful being in front of me. And really getting like that's, that's who I am. And, um, and even having a conversation with this being, you know, and this being can have a conversation back, you know, just like remember Sandra when we came into this earth, you know, this is what we came to do. And, and of course, you know, yeah, I think I'm sometimes I'm making this all up. Who knows? But it is to have this soul step back into me and really feel like we're in this together to um, quiet your mind and my mind with the intention of really um, becoming strong with my soul. If there's any messages uh, that my soul has for me, you know, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm driving in my car, I get these great thoughts. Or sometimes when I'm in the shower and my mind is quiet, um, all of a sudden there's a, an idea you know, and it's like, where does that come from? Well, again, we are souls having a human experience. And so we can tap into our own souls, but it's only through a quiet mind. Now I'm as addicted to technology as anybody. You know, I'm either on Netflix or I'm on my iPhone. It's very hard for me to not hear the ping of a text message and not like go grab it. So sometimes I have to turn off my phone to avoid distractions, but it, it takes something. Uh, one of the tutors, Jenny Gomez was her name, is her name. She spends 10 minutes in the morning, um, five to 10 minutes quieting her mind and getting in touch with her own soul. And even if you don't do what I just said, if you just say, you know, say a little prayer, can I get in touch with my own soul? And then just sit in the quiet and concentrate on your breath. And yes, of course, thoughts will come in and out because we're human, very hard to quiet our mind. But anytime a thought comes up, and just pretend it's a bubble underneath the ocean and let it bubble up to the surface. Don't pay any attention to it. And keep trying to uh, let thoughts go and just keep the mind still. And it's not only a great practice for, um, I mean, 
the trance state, meditation state, anytime we quiet our mind, it's it's great, obviously, on a soul level, but it's also great that it it helps you on, on a daily basis. Uh, it helps with stress. It helps with um, even your physical healing. People who meditate have lower blood pressure, you know, so it's all good. So the connecting with the soul is is one thing. And then connecting with the spirit world is another thing. And and that is, like I had mentioned before, um, having a a intention of connecting with the spirit world, saying, spirit world, you know, um, could you come close? Uh, would you be with me? Would you empower me? And again, I imagine myself with this really massively bright light that's emanating outside of myself. And then I imagine the sun being like God and the rays of light are just mixing in with the light that is emanating outside of myself. And I have, I hold that picture in my mind. Uh, a lot of people call this sitting in the power as well. You might have heard that on another episode or from somewhere else. But from that point, you know, I've, I put that out there. And then what I do is I just quiet my mind with the intention that I'm soaking up any power of the spirit world that I'm, I'm meant to, or um, if we use this for trance healing or trance communication, that trusting that that, that that spirit world is with us, okay? So it's, I don't want to say it's hard to do, but I think when we're so used to being in such a busy mind that it really takes something. And, you know, if it works to put on your daily calendar, I'm going to spend 10 minutes doing this, you know, you do it. Um, and, and just practice. That's all you can do is practice, but be aware, keep a journal, if you like, of, of things that happen throughout the day. And, uh, sometimes you get these aha moments. Sometimes, man, I call them miracles, you know, things that, um, you may have written in your notebook that talking to your spirit guides that you want to have happen and suddenly things start happening. It's, it's really great. Now, Simone, our tutor, she does not do this sitting to connect with her soul. She says she just connects with the spirit world and trusts it'll all work out. So there is not one specific way to do anything. And, um, I, I, Gosh, they really reinforced that the spirit world is looking for new ways to experiment with us. And, uh, and so this is trial and error. I mean, it's not even error, but I mean, it's trial, it's practice and being open and willing to experience something outside of yourself, something, uh, messages from your loved ones, messages from your spirit team, uh, witnessing phenomena. I mean, when I witnessed, uh, there's one man that was in my group and when he went into the trance mode, he has this uh, Chinese philosopher that speaks through him. And to witness, because I, this man's from Australia and has got an Australian accent and the voice that spoke through him uh, sounded Chinese. And one of the, even the bits of philosophy that he shared was uh, talking about life and when things go wrong and he, and he, and this wise voice said, you know, imagine a cloud that comes in front of the sun, you know, and it darkens our day. And I remember this so clearly because I, I just had this vision, you know, we have, can, we can have a joy, joyous life and then something happens. Well, then, you know, the, what this philosophy was saying is what is a cloud and a cloud is water. And why is water important? And water nourishes the ground so things can grow. And in that moment, I just saw that what if, what if the problems we're having are feeding our growth? You know, so that was just a, something I saw. And then uh, he also had a, a person that spoke through him. His name was Charlie. He was very, it talked completely different than this guy uh, spoke, but he I had just a very simple message, you know, don't make it complicated. Um, sit in the sunlight and be happy. You know, that was the message. And again, when people are speaking these, these words of philosophy, they come out so smooth, not like a person thinking about what words they're going to say. So I witnessed a couple of dozen, uh, people, uh, 
not a couple of dozen people, a couple of dozen different times people spoke this philosophy. And it was so beautiful. And I wish, like we had tape recorders and I could tape record all this because it was so great. And then, you know, I did uh, my trance speaking in front of my group of four. And although I don't remember the words, you know, the the message that was delivered was about courage and how fear wants to keep jumping in front of you in, in the path that you're on. And so my message was very playful because it was saying, you know, grab a hold of fear and thank it for sharing. Know that it's going to be on your path with you, but tuck it in your backpack. I didn't say backpack. I used a term that I don't normally say. And then I say, and then I said, I do remember this, put on your cloak and put on your cap. Now I never say cloak, you know, I'm an American and that's not a word I use, but it was about being on the adventure of life and going into kind of uncharted territories and exploring and discovering. And of course, fear wants to keep uh, jumping out and and being, uh, you know, in front of me and, and things. But when I opened my eyes, you know, I, I got the message to my core because, again, I was rather afraid of closing my eyes in front of this group of people and, and doing this trance speaking, but I did it. So the message was for all of them and it was for me too. And, and again, using words that I don't normally use in language uh, leads me to believe that this wasn't coming from me or my subconscious. And again, it was a very smooth communication, not me like right now, I'm looking for the right word to say. There was none of that. It was just very, very smooth. And then the second time I did it, which was so funny because the leader of the group, she said, uh, we're all sitting in a big circle. And she says, if anybody wants to do trance speaking in front of the group, you're welcome to. And in my mind, I'm thinking there's no freaking way, right? In front of all these people looking at me. And then it came to me that I obviously don't have to do it, but I thought, I've come this far, right? I have. have. And I think you know me well enough to know that I really want to serve and make a difference in other lives. And if I could get this practice uh, out of the way of having all these eyes looking at me and feel comfortable going into this, this state of relaxation and quieting my mind. And she says, it's even okay if no words come come to you, but to just try it. And I thought, yeah, I've come this far. Why? the heck not. So with my, and I can't believe I raised my hand, but I did. And with my eyes closed, uh, I took many, many deep breaths. And I don't know if I was sitting there for five minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes, but it, it takes something to say, to put aside my mind that wants to say, you got a dozen people looking at you right now and they're expecting something profound from you. And I'm like, just let it be. It may or may not happen. So I closed my eyes and sat there for a long time. And finally, I got to the point where I wasn't even thinking people were looking at me. And I did not feel the presence of the goosebumps or my breathing changing or anything. And I said, well, you know, no time like the present. So I said, "I spirit wants to tell you. And then I just waited. And then all of a sudden, I felt, um, gosh, I don't even know how to say it. I just felt like I was rocking on on top of the waves like I was a boat, that I was in a boat. So I just started speaking. I said, uh, and I don't remember the words because obviously I was was, uh, very relaxed and trying not to pay attention. But basically what came out of my mouth was something about, um, you know, we all set our like destination ahead of us, where we want to go. We have our dreams, we have our our goals. Um, But like a, a ship on the ocean or a boat on the ocean, um, you know, for a certain amount of time, we are on that path. We have that destination, but then the waves will churn up and a you know, dark sky will come and that our boat could actually end up in a different direction from where we started. And, and so realizing that, um, you know, that we get, we get all every bit of frustration and things like that, that we're off the course, but the, message that came out is it doesn't matter the destination. What matters is how we handle the rocky seas and what we learn. And uh, again, I gosh, I wish I had this tape recorded, but like that's the message I remember. And so when I opened my eyes, when it was over, 
And you don't just say, okay, I'm done. Open your eyes. Really take something because you, you know, you're in such a deep state that very slowly, uh, I, I, you have to remember that you're in the room and I just start wiggling my toes and my fingertips and just really feeling like, okay, I'm here. And then when I'm ready, I open my eyes. I mean, it could be a couple of minutes to kind of get out of this trance mode. Um, and, I opened my eyes and, you know, people are looking at me like, wow, that was so profound. And there were words they said, I said, that I don't even remember saying, okay, because I'm trying not to pay attention. But even the leader, she says, you know, I saw you catch yourself a few times. And I said, yeah, it's my mind thinking. Is this me speaking or is it, you know, the spirit world? But she says, you know, you just take a deep breath and you'd go back in and then, you know, I was smoothly saying all these words of inspiration. And even the leader said, she says, your words were so impactful for me. And then um, the other people in the group said the same thing. And and some of the people that had seen me both times said both, you know, when I shared these this inspiration, it was um, very joyful. Like I have a joyful presence that's stepping into me sharing, you know, it's uh I don't have the Chinese guy, right? <laughs> Not to say I don't want to have one, but um, yeah, who knows? And uh, and who's speaking? Are these uh, this team? You know, that's merging into one of um, I don't know ascended beings that are are using me for inspiration. But what I want to do with this, first of all, is the more and more and more I do it, is the closer connection I have. Uh, with my spirit team, it's it's realizing that they are with me, um, and then also I want to bring these words of inspiration to you. I want to practice this and record what I'm saying, and then air them on this show. I mean, in different times, or I could have a a page that I, I put them all on, I suppose. But the I want to do this, and because the words. Um, and I don't know if you've seen any of the, some of the words that I've written. I've done what's called, um, I think it's called channeling philosophy. You know, I was too scared when I got back from the Arthur Finley College last year to do medium readings on people. But I, and you can do this as well. This is not just something I do, but you can have the intention to connect with the spirit world. Uh, imagine yourself with that white light going through you and that, you know, rays of sunshine coming from the sun, your God, however you want to visualize it. There's no right way or wrong way, but then have the intention if there's any, uh, words to write down anything you want to say. Well, I've actually had my computer in front of me and I've written uh, I call them bits of philosophy. They're, some of them are poetic. Some of them are just um, words telling a story, but very interesting. And so I all of a sudden hear a word in my mind and I write it, hear another word, write it, hear another word, write it. It's very different from me trying to um, say, I want to write a poem on, I don't know what, on a bird, you know, and then me trying to come up with a poem. The words just come right to my mind. And this is something you can practice as well. This is channeling philosophy. Um, and on my website, sandrachamplain.com, um, there's a place where it says blog. And yes, I don't blog too much. Sorry about that. Um, but I just started, um, or I have posted a few of these bits of philosophy. So I want to bring more of these through me because I know they're very healing words to me and I've posted them all on Facebook as well on the We Don't Die Radio um, page and yeah, they help with our lives. So that that's the intention of why I want to do more in this trance uh, speaking um, and maybe even trance communication. You know, I know Oh, I was told I've got to practice my mediumship. So what that looks like, I don't know. But um, uh, it's not, boy, it's not anything that, you know, you can just practice once and there you have it. So what I want to leave you with really is that um, mediumship and trance communications, trance speaking, all of these things, these are not gifts to the chosen few. This is a skill. This is you and me building up a relationship with our friends, our spirit team in the other world, in the hereafter. 
with an intention of of serving others, of being the strongest you you are while you're here on planet Earth, it is practicing. And you, do you have to do it 10 minutes a day? No. But, you know, I like to relate it to somebody who wants to have a great, strong physique. You know, you buy yourself a gym membership and uh, great, but nothing's going to happen unless you start working the muscles. So at whatever speed you in intensity, you work that muscle, it shows how fast you can transform your body. So as far as this, uh, certainly we need to live our lives. So, you know, there's days you're not going to be able to do this, but if you can make a practice of the sitting in the power, connecting with your spirit team, getting, letting them get used to using your energy and talking to them, like, where are we going to go with this? You know, um, finding that part of it that inspires you. You know, some people want to just share their philosophy, work one-on-one with a person. And, you know, um, it's not, I wouldn't call it a psychic meeting, a uh, psychic reading, but it's more, kind of channeling this the spirit world to tell someone else, you know, if they're interested, if they come to you, uh, what messages the spirit world wants you to know about your life. There's lot, lots of ways to play with this. So if this episode interests you, I encourage you to start finding a time to quiet your mind Um Sometimes I do this also before I go to bed at night. If I'm super tired, I will fall asleep. However, um, if my mind is still kind of awake and it's bedtime, I will lie in bed with the intention, okay, spirit world, use my energy, blend with me, you know, um, use me, give me some insights how we're, we're best able to uh, work together. And, you know, but I, I want to personally tell you, I my request for my spirit team is to have some things happen that there's no possible way that I could do. Like I said, if I could write something in a different language, that would, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know, like I know um, that this isn't coming from me. I do know that some of this philosophy that I've written, there's no way this came from me because there's words that I actually have to look up in a dictionary that I don't normally say in, in conversation. Uh, but ultimately, if I can bring through words that will make a difference in your life and my life and other people's lives, I think that's important. I'm going to just flip through my notebook one last time because I don't want to miss anything. Oh, here's something cool. There is something called uh, aura photography, and we've all heard that we have have this aura around us, and I've never really paid much attention to aura stuff, but there is some super-duper photography equipment out there that uh, we actually saw some images of um, a person before they... Uh, sat in the power and went into this trance mode. And, you know, there they sat with, you know, it was kind of like a red background. It looked like they're lighting behind them. And then no sooner did they sit in the power and, and do this um, intention of connecting with the spirit world. But the next picture that came in is they had this big, like golden glow light around them. Uh, and I thought that's pretty cool. And then also they, there were pictures of someone who has not yet been prayed for. Uh, I say prayer, it's, you know, the trance healing. And then you can see there's a picture of when the trance healing started. It was like this golden light going into the side of them. And then after the trance healing, uh, there was like a golden light that was surrounding them. So that's, pretty awesome. And, and this um, photography machinery, I guess it actually picks up the different uh, levels of heat energy, I guess, very subtly. So that's pretty cool. And what else? Thank you for bearing with me as I'm looking through this. I just, if there's something good, I don't want to leave you. Oh yeah, I know what I can tell you. This is great. Um, I've said this before in different episodes, but there is a website called snui.org, and that's the Spiritualist National Union International. And the spiritualists uh, have church services online. And why I'm thinking about this is the Arthur Finley College did two 
evenings of these church services, and during the church service, they do medium readings on the audience, the minister uh, does, and oh my gosh, they're just fantastic. And filled with fun, filled with joy, um, This our friends and family in the spirit world are loving life. I mean, it's a great place. You know, of course, we're mourning their them from our side because we miss them, but they're in a great place. So the messages that come through are so filled with life and so filled with happiness. And the snui.org website is an online spiritualist church for, for lack of a better term. You can become a member of it and it's cheap. It's like $25 a year, maybe, but they have, uh, Several times a week, two or three times a week, they have church services. They also have um, mediumship groups where you can learn mediumship, you can practice mediumship, you can practice on other people, uh, you can practice these spirit drawings, and and there's just so much. It is a wealth of information for a very inexpensive price, and you may not ever be able to travel to the Arthur Finley College. No biggie. You can join this snui.org and be part of it and learn so much and be around like-minded people. And also, I have had my loved ones come through during one of the church services. And you might have heard this on a on a different episode, but I remember right after I joined, I was going out for walks every day, and I would pick dandelions, and I would blow them and make a wish for my life you know, as I was doing these walks, I felt like a little kid because remember being a little kid blowing dandelions. Well, that's what I did. So, right after I joined SNUI, I, you know, and I'm questioning myself, is it SNUI.org or .com? I think it's .org, um, but it may be .com. I apologize about that. Um, But when I was on one of these church services, um, when it came time for the mediums to speak, the the woman said, okay, I've got a father here and described my dad and his death from cancer and, you know, where it was and everything. And I said, you know, that's me. And she says, oh, your dad's telling me that every time you go for a walk, he's with you every time you blow the dandelion and make a wish. You know, it's like, that was so specific. And that came from a a medium who was somewhere else in the world wasn't even with me. So if you're anxious to make uh, learn about these things and um, also have many, 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 many opportunities for your loved ones to come through and speak to you, it's a really cost-effective way to do that. So I, I tell you, it's it's great. Even in your own community, if you uh, look for a spiritualist church, uh, you you can be any denomination and go. They are all accepting. Um, but during every church service at the very end, the minister will uh, work the room. And as proof of con- our continuation um, as souls after our human departure, they do medium readings on the audience. So that's the spiritualism, spiritualist church. And I think we're going to close this episode. I do. Oh, no, here's something funny. We did an evening that we tried to do spirit photography, and it was all using our telephones, our smartphones, and going into the trance mode and then taking pictures in the room to see if any phenomena materialized on the on our cameras. And it did not, okay? So I was left disappointed. But I did see from the tutors uh, pictures that they had taken previously that things did show up. So I thought that was pretty cool. And also when we did our experiment, we were all very deep and, you know, clearing our mind in the trance mode. Whereas in the past, when that experiment's been done, people were filled with energy and song and music. And so I am of the belief that our laughter brings really great energy and uh, music and things like that. So I am going to leave you, I think, with go for it. You know, you 
are a divine soul having a human experience. You're more powerful than you think. You have an unseen group of spirit folks around you that are encouraging you right now to live the best life ever. They're with you in the ups. They're with you in the downs. Uh, they need to hear communication from you and how to help you. Um, you they want you to know that you are loved so much. Uh, there's so much love coming from them to you. You truly aren't alone. You will never fail. Uh, life is an education for the soul. Real growth for our soul comes from suffering. And I know that's tough to hear, but you know, it, it, boy, when you suffer and you overcome something, the gift you are to helping other people is, is just immeasurable. Um, share your light. Practice this. Practice this sitting in the power, connect with your soul. Even if you don't know what you're doing, who cares? Take a moment, have the intention, the prayer really for you, and then just sit and quiet your mind and see what happens. Okay. So I haven't mentioned this for a while, but, um, Oh, I haven't mentioned it on this episode, but if you're interested in meeting me in person, I will be speaking at the Afterlife Research and Education Symposium, September 15th through 17th in Scottsdale, Arizona. You can go to afterlifestudies.org to register. And I'm pleased to tell you there's already uh, 300 people that have signed up for this. And a little birdie told me that Many, many, many of them are because you listen to this radio show. So if you want to meet like-minded people that are interested in this topic and other fellow listeners, it's a great place to do. Afterlifestudies.org to register. And even if you can't come in September, really check out the website and some of the speakers because there's some cool bean stuff happening in the world of life after death. Uh, that's, oh gosh, you're not even going to believe it. You're not even going to believe it. So also, like I said, if you want to buy me a cup of coffee or help support this radio show, um, I would appreciate that, that every, every dime helps. And if not, no pressure. Okay. But I do promise to keep this commercial free because I hate commercials. Uh, and you, you can simply go to paypal.me slash Sandra Champlain. So in closing, as you know, my name is Sandra Champlain, and I'm so happy to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. You have no idea how much this means to me. I love it. And I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important. So be left with the thought, mediumship is not a gift. It is a skill. If this lights up your soul and you want to play with it, it's just practice, 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 and uh, and really quieting your mind and and know that 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 gang of invisible folks is around you, cheering you on, and your loved ones as well. So I want to thank you for listening, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>